It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for VCTV's PM, which means nightly news roundup. VCTV's Boy, nightly news roundup. Joe Bushy. Joseph, it's been a while since uh, you've joined me at the desk. We've been together at the desk. Uh, we've got a jam-packed show getting you ready for the weekend. Hopefully we'll have time to pack it all in. Let's take a look at what's coming up. And that's um, uh, the, the fancy graphics here. Of course, uh, the co-op employees voted to unionize. Speaking of unions, uh, union workers at the retreat saw some big layoffs this week. And uh, the Pee Wee Super Bowl team is back in action. All that and more. The goal to do it in 15 minutes or less. Uh, much less at this point. So stick with us right here in 5:45 Live. Tamir, throat singing. Okay. Tamir, he他想看一下. Uh, if you really want to, can you come nearer? <laughs> Uh. <laughs> All right, welcome back to this uh, November 16th, 2012 edition of 545 Live footage of uh, a Mongolian night of music and dance put on by the Leland and Gray's Journey East program at uh, Leland and Gray. Now, that shows all this week on BCTV Channel 8, uh, a stunning performance that was uh, in a Q&A after the performance where vocalists demonstrated uh, just how they ripple those vocal cords there so students could see. You can do that, can't you? Something like that. <laughs> no, not at all. It's really, really phenomenal when you watch them sing it. Uh, uh, a mystery to me how a, a human being could make that, uh, that kind of sound. Pretty amazing. Check it out if you get a chance. BCTV Channel 8 all this week. Find the schedule at brattlebrotv.org. That's enough uh, shameless promotion, at least for the uh, first couple minutes. Joseph, let's uh, launch into the story, and for that I'm going to put you into the newsroom. Uh, so hopefully we can, uh, shoo, there we go, on to your close-up here and uh, start with uh, the co-op. Right a rip. We'll kick off the show today at the Brattleboro Food Co-op, where on Wednesday workers voted to join the local 1459 United Food and Commercial Workers Union. This comes after a prolonged and very public debate between the downtown grocers' employees and administration took the matter to a store-wide vote. With 126 of the 142 eligible employees voted 74 to 45 to adopt the UFCW as their union. Content specialist Maria Dominguez has been following this story from the get-go, uh, including talking with Rick Brown, who's the secretary treasurer of that 1459 uh, division of the United Food and Commercial Workers Union. Let's take a look at his comments. It gives the workers here an opportunity to have more of a voice and more input in the future of the uh, co-op, and hopefully as a result of that shared mutual vision uh, we have a stronger co-op, a stronger workforce, a stronger community. All right, back uh, into the news desk, and Joe will put it right back on your close-up. The right. next story right here. And while the buzzword union in Brattleboro has belonged to the Brattleboro Food Co-op as of late, the latest, quick cry, the latest outcry for workers to organize, Lance, our next story, at the Brattleboro Retreat, where a series of controversies, including the institution's temporary loss of their Medicare Medicaid license and the looming threat of a union strike, reached a boiling point this week when the administration announced major layoffs across several departments. This comes as a shock to members of the community and retreat employees alike after the hospital posted record earnings in 2010 and 2011, leaving a series of as yet unanswered questions about the source of the company's self-professed financial troubles. Uh, folks, BCTV volunteers, a, a collection of them, were down uh, uh, at the retreat gates, walking distance from here all this week uh, to catch some interviews with employees uh, about the uh, events that have been unfolding. The employees here have seen 2010, 2011 boom years at the retreat. The retreat, retreat has, as a matter of fact, made millions of dollars in 2010, 2011. And instead of sharing in it, uh, they have pr probably the most radical and drastic contract demands that this union has ever seen. All right, uh, back into the stories, Joe. Let's talk Pop Warner. I've even got a script for you there here. There we go. If you There's wanna, a lead story for you. Yeah, if you want to take a stab at that, and then we'll break down all the details in, in just a moment. All right, then. Well, the uh, Brattleboro Generals a junior midget football team has done it again with a second trip to the Pop Warner Super Bowl in as many years. And I believe, as of last year, they had not yet ever been to the Super Bowl. So last yeah. year was the first. 
back, back again, to back years. Back to back, right back. Uh, again, in as many years. So uh, I was present with a camera in hand at last year's upset victory as Brattleboro handed North Country in a, a, an elusive and decisive 21 to 7 loss. Let's uh, take a flashback in time to this clip. Backs side by side, five yards deep. And right up the gut. How about that? Bring it on. All right, uh, they can uh, check the Facebook page, uh, Joe, to find out uh, all that we'll information. Put something up on the 545 Live page with some more details, or they can go on Facebook and uh, Brattleboro Generals has their own Facebook page on there, Pop Warner, uh, Pop Warner Football, and you can find more details on there. And we all know uh, how uh, time and location. How uh, engaged one WTSA's Tim Johnson is uh, in this effort, so uh, it'll be broadcast as well. All right. Tim uh, and I will be there both. Tim will be uh, uh, doing the play-by-play, and I will be filming as we did last year. And so I uh, look forward to seeing that on BCTV. For what could be the launch of a dynasty. Very uh, mid-'90s Patriots here as they go mm-hmm. uh, back-to-back years. We'll have to see how it all mm-hmm. unfolds. All right, uh, let's see what we've got next here, Joe. Maybe I'll get you to roll through that clip. Uh, yeah. Well, let's go what back to you for this one. All right, I'll take it. All right, <clears throat> let me see. Next, well, after 22 arrests and without being taken to court, the six women of the Shut It Down Affinity Group, ages 64 to 92, will finally have to face a jury after a demonstration that included padlocking the gate to energy nuclear Vermont Yankees, Vernon-based plant. That demonstration, now more than a year ago, landed the ladies in the Brattleboro Police Department dispatch office of this very building for the processing, where content specialist Maria Dominguez caught up with them. She's been busy. Let's take a look at the footage. What we have to think of is future generations. But the people now who are, you know, exposed to this cancerous radiation that is going forth from that plant every day. Uh, let's continue talking about the skate park a little bit. Three uh, input design meetings where Mike McIntyre, who is the uh, designer hired to put together this skate park plan, took a lot of input and managed to somehow field all of this input in a sea of controversy and put together a really the, remarkable design. This guy is a great guy. He is so multifaceted. He is he blends with the skaters and with the with the uh, uh, extreme corporate end of the world, and uh, he really is putting us together a wonderful plan for a. Uh, like he, we've always talked about that, you know, the best we can do for a skate park for Brattleboro, Vermont. One thing that was unique is we wanted to just not have something that was floating in isolation. We wanted to make sure that if funds became available or the school district said, go ahead and do this, they acknowledge that, that you want to have a playground, um, uh, also have areas to, see, to sit and a, more of a fitness path around the park. Everything in there is really mellow, but also very advanced. Next, VPR was in town on Wednesday to broadcast their program, Vermont Edition, live from the co-op. Content specialist Maria Dominguez was on the scene to capture host Jane Lindholm at the helm of the broadcast. We're here because we want to focus on this community and what better way to do that than to be in it. We have a live audience. We're getting some uh, surprise maybe the bubble looks from some of the people here who may have thought they were just coming in to have a nice little lunch. Some of them will be participating in today's show and sharing their questions and perspectives on Brattleboro. Again, footage from content specialist Maria Dominguez, who was working tirelessly behind the scenes to gather all of this footage here and all of these stories. And once again, Joe, I will send it back to you. And for that, we'll go back into the newsroom. And for that, we'll use our right. sweet new animation and maybe even uh, throw a little something up uh, over the shoulder here. Take this one away. All right, next we've got a proposal that could have netted the town of Newfane a cool $275,000 using FEMA funds destined for the repair of the town's Hunter Brook Bridge to instead buy out the loan. Homeowner residing across the Irene Ravage Bridge has been struck down. At a special town meeting held at the Newfane Firehouse this month, residents of a Newfane residents of Newfane turned out in full force to make a decision. Newfane Select Board member John Mack said he and the board couldn't have made himself. I couldn't, in good conscience, walk away from 275 grand to do things that we really needed done. But if the town feels that's more of a risk and would rather be have it as part of taxation as a part of our norm quote normal process i'm comfortable with that decision 
Well, today is Vermont's, today Vermont independent tenured Senator Bernie Sanders posted footage of his address at Wednesday's hands off Social Security, Medicare and Medicaid summit. Deficit reduction is a serious issue, but it must be done in a way that is fair. We must not balance the budget on the backs of the elderly, the sick, the children or the poor. All right, one more time, Joe, just because it's so fun. I'll, I'll put us back into the newsroom here, and you can take away another scripted story. Right. And uh, maybe even do it with a, without an accompanying... It up, without screwing it up, yeah. That's not what I was going to say. I was going to say with yeah. a, an accompanying <laughs> graphic over your shoulder to really... Uh, ho, the ho, ho, there we, there go. we go. Well, this month, towns in the surrounding area received a letter from Rescue Inc. detailing an organizational restructuring that could have eliminated local representation for municipalities paying into rescue service area coverage. But at a private meeting held Monday, Rescue Inc.'s Board of Directors voted down the proposal, leaving the age-old notion of representation with taxation intact. At a regularly scheduled select board meeting prior to the vote, Townsend Board Chair Hetty Harris discussed the impact of the potential change. We need to be concerned about rescue because they are in the middle of a big restructuring. We are hosting a, an outpost for them in Townsend. Back All to right. you, Joe. Back to me. I love it. Next, well, this year's Super Tuesday elections returned longtime Wyndham County Senator Jeanette White to the political arena. Among the bills she'll take to the State House this winter, the much maligned Death with Dignity Bill, which would allow physicians to write terminally ill patients a lethal prescription, something advocates of legislation say is necessary to accelerate the inevitable in cases of extreme suffering. Yesterday, Wyndham District 4 rep and Death with Dignity supporter Mike Rowicki hosted on his program, Montpelier Connection, Bill Schmidt, a Death with Dignity activist and longtime hospice volunteer who sought to debunk the myths of offering deceased patients an easy way out. This diagnosis, prognosis has to be made by a f physician and confirmed by a second physician. The person has to be over 18, mentally competent, and it has to be uh, his or her choice. All right, uh, let's wrap up, Joe, here. Just check in with the weather. This is courtesy of BUHS TV, uh, the high school's morning news advisory class who puts to on a uh, live 15 minute broadcast and uh, a series of announcements that show from 10.15 a.m. following the rebroadcast of this here, 5.45 live, um, all the way up until uh, 11 with some of, uh, announcements kind of geared toward parents and students, but information that uh, folks from around the community can enjoy as well, including their weather. There seems to be a low pressure system uh, starting around Delaware, and it's moving its way up the Jersey coast. Um, it will maybe come by Vermont on around Tuesday, so just maybe have an umbrella or a raincoat in your car so you don't get wet. Back to the desk. Thank you. And in this case, it's back to our desk. And in this case, Joe, it's full lid. All right, everybody, head out there and enjoy the weekend. Be sure to uh, catch a peek on BCTV next week to see if uh, the Brattleboro Generals did, in fact, take their second Super Bowl in as many years. Thanks to content specialist Maria Dominguez, who pulled together many of the clips you're watching now, a lot of that content. Rich Melanson, who gathered uh, footage in Newfane and Townsend on the municipal side of our coverage, and everybody else that makes 545 Live tick the Thank way it you. does, including Blasta Papelka. And this guy here, Joe Bushy. I'm Roland Boyden. Uh, enjoy the weekend, folks. Good night. And look for the pass by Brown. Out of the hands and intercepted. Oh my! Is that? Is it? It's Martinez. Interception. Pick six, baby. Touchdown, Delaware. Oh my!